Um, when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to be somebody, somebody different, somebody special, and I wanted to be on The X-Files. <laughs> Um, it was the mid-90s, and uh, X-Files mania was in full flower. The world had never seen a sexy, supernatural uh, soap opera before, and we were all in. Um, I watched every episode and discussed it in great detail with my best friend at the time, Jeff. Um, we, of course, knew that the world of the X-Files wasn't really real, um, but we were so into it. Um, that there was some childlike part of us that just wanted to believe that you know somehow we could enter into that universe of which we were so enamored. So in some of those post-X-Files meandering conversations that we would have, um, we would sometimes just cast around for some connection, however scant, to, um, w between us and you know those, those characters in that world. And one time we actually did come up with one tiny thing, and that was that I looked enough like Agent Mulder to potentially play his younger sister on the show. Um, I mean, we're both white and we both have brown hair. I mean, what are the odds? Um, so I started to formulate a plan. Uh, uh, because um, Mulder's sister, if you don't know, uh, was actually abducted by aliens when they were both children. And um, so I started to formulate a plan that I could pitch to the networks an entire season of The X-Files that would revolve around the reappearance of Mulder's younger sister. And who better to play her than a totally unknown, inexperienced young actress, me! <laughs> Um, the only problem was that, of course, we had no connection whatsoever to film and television industry, and we lived far away from Hollywood in Seattle, Washington. Um, but uh, the one thing that we did have going for us was that uh, um, X-Files wasn't shot in Hollywood. It was actually shot in Vancouver, Canada, which is only four hours drive from Seattle. Um, so one day, my sweet and supportive friend Jeff actually managed to lay hands on this Vancouver, Canada phone book. And he brought it over to my apartment and we were so excited. And you know, this is pre-internet, we just have no idea where to start this, we're just grasping at straws. And we were like, I guess we'll just look up casting directors. <laughs> we look up casting directors in the phone book and sure enough, there are three casting directors listed. So with trembling hands, I pick up the phone and I dial the first one and I say, hello, do you do casting for the X-Files? No, we do not. Um, okay, so I hang up and dial the next one. Do you do casting for the X-Files? No, we do not. Okay, so, you know, um, hope's pretty much dashed at this point, but there's still one more number left to call. And um, the last name, I'll never forget it, his name was Zoltan Zdekeli. It's like the best name I've ever heard. I'll never forget that name. So I pick up the phone, I call Zoltan, and I say, hello, do you do casting for the X-Files? And he says, yes, we do. When would you like to come in? Uh, and I know what you're thinking. That's too easy. <laughs> but I mean, I was only 20 years old. I didn't know. It's like maybe all that it takes is a little chutzpah and one phone call and you're a big star. So we make an appointment for me to come in the following week. So of course I'm super excited, and um, and Jeff uh, offers to come with me on my trip uh, to do my makeup for me. See, I have little to no experience with makeup, and uh, Jeff actually had an alternate persona as a drag performer, where he would dress up as Wonder Woman and perform in uh, parades and events and drag shows and like that. So he had way more experience with. Uh, makeup, and of course, I would be thrilled to have his comp company and support on this adventure. So, you know, the big day arrives, and we drive to Vancouver. It's about an hour before the appointment, and we set up shop in a little coffee shop. And he gets out all his makeup supplies and starts doing my makeup. And we're just sitting there talking, excited. And he's such a good friend; is just doing such a nice, thorough job. And then finally, it's about 20 minutes before uh, the appointment, and he declares that he's done. And I go into the bathroom to see how beautiful he has made me. And then and as I see my reflection for the first time in the mirror, 
I am horrified. Uh, I look like Joan Crawford, age 65. Like, it hadn't even occurred to me that he might have a slightly different style of makeup than the kind of the kind that I was going for. So I just have drawn on eyebrows and big stripes of blush and you know, penciled on lips and it's just totally wrong. So I have to hurt his feelings and ask him to just scrub it all off. And we're just, you know, scrubbing it, scraping it, and washing my face. And by that time now we're late and there's no time to even put on just any little more touch of makeup. So we just uh, jump in the car, drive across town. It's just in time for my appointment. And I run up the steps and open the door and there's Zoltan behind a big desk. And as I step into the office, um, I can see uh, that the look on his face is just one of shock. And um, I'm confused. And, I, um, uh, and in, the, in those few moments that I'm uh, trying to understand what's happening, why he looks shocked, um, my eyes just start to cast around to the walls of the office. And I see that they are covered with headshots. And these headshots are not of normal looking people like me. They're all pictures of people that are definitely very special and very different. They're all people that look unusual in some way, that they um, either have um, full facial tattoos or implanted devil horns or albino coloring. And as I try to hand Zoltan my headshot, he doesn't even accept it. And he says, I'm sorry, I just assumed that you had seen an ad that I run in the Vancouver Weekly where I'm, I'm uh, looking for freaks and unusual looking people. And whenever X-Files has a need like that, they might contact me, but I have nothing to do whatsoever with you know, the people that cast normal actors on the show. So, uh, very disappointing. Um, I had wanted so badly to be special and different, but in the end, I was nowhere near special enough. <laughs> um, so I get back in the car, and I go back to Seattle with my tail between my legs, though unfortunately not a real tail, because if it had been real, it would have gotten me a lot farther with Zoltan. <laughs> so, thank you.